So I'm uh, talking about some performance improvement and some uh, tooling we developed or enhanced for for that. Uh, first about the tooling we had or and have. There were there or there is still this so-called uh, profile zone class in core LibreOffice. Uh, and it used to work so that for each uh, time you constructed such an object, it logs one line of, of text and, and then when the object goes away, it also logs one line of text. So would, you would like um, have one such variable in a function and, and then you would get one line when the function is entered and one line when the function is, is exited. And uh, the output format from this was some uh, homegrown format that we had some Perl scripts to manipulate and inspect with. I don't remember if, what, if we had some graphical tool to look at the result, but it's possible also. Anyway, we wanted something better. We wanted something that would uh, produce a format that would be directly usable by some existing viewer and uh, the choice was uh, a format defined by Google trace event format it's used by uh, Chrome uh, and also Chrome also is a viewer for this format uh, it's based on or it is JSON and it is fairly human readable the specification is public but of course it's just uh, something that google has come up with it's not clear how how stable it will be in this format but anyway it's good enough for now uh, so we modified this profile zone class to instead output this tracebed data and uh, I also refactored the, the class to to be able to output other types of events than the ones that correspond directly to the profile zone things unfortunately then after a while I noticed that actually the tracebed viewer in Chrome doesn't support all the types of events that they specify so it was a bit annoying uh, and we wanted something similar or more or less identical in the online code base too uh, we can't use the same implementation as in core because that uses LibreOffice specific types and uh, so it was it's not like thousands of lines of code anyway so I just rewrote it to use such types that are available in online like standard string types and so on and uh, we wanted something similar also for the JavaScript I mean so not not yet that one <laughs> Uh, how are these trace events then handled in the online process processes? It is the WSG process that uh, creates this file and writes to it because that file is somewhere the file system where you want it to be. It's not inside these uh, these sandboxes or jails that the kit processes only have access to. But uh, most of the interesting profiling data is, is from the kit processes, so they have to send these events as they are generated to, to the WSD process. Uh, and uh, then this was what I was already starting to talk about. We wanted it in JavaScript too, and uh, there 
you can't have just simple uh, variables that do something when they are constructed and when they are destructed because JavaScript is garbage collected. Not, it's not uh, scope-based lifetime of variables. So the API is slightly different. You need to call a function when you want uh, one of these events to be generated. And this data is then sent to the WSD process and and written out by it. Uh, and all, all this, of course, is entirely optional. You have to enable it in the in the lolwsd.xml file. And then additionally, you have to turn it on for individual documents being edited. And uh, have we found any any results then thanks to this yes we have some uh, we found that for instance the message handling in, in the javascript could be improved by a kind of buffering that we call slurping and also we find that something that we expected would be very heavy heavy turned out to not be that heavy after all or at least the trace events generated from that, those were quite insignificant in, in duration. And then uh, the other kinds of improvements that we have done that have not used this trace event tooling. We have used other tools to discover bottlenecks and and parts of the code that take lots of time. Uh, we were in initially of the opinion that JavaScript is quite fast language and, and uh, you don't have to be too careful with how you write code, but that turns out to be uh, a misunderstanding. And in fact, if you do things wrongly, it will be very slow and just by some relatively small refactoring, you can improve performance a lot. Uh, for instance, this slope that I mentioned and also other kinds of, of buffering helps. And uh, if you create strings like all time by appending one character to a string and signing it to the same variable and so on, that's obviously going to be very slow. And uh, also the way our JavaScript reacts to messages from the uh, cool server had, has been improved. Like uh, when the server sends us messages that cause, cause the, uh, the document model to be modified. Uh, I mean, for, for the for those parts of the UI that are implemented in HTML. It's not a good idea to keep doing it repeatedly the same things, even if you get the same messages, but it's a good idea to wait a bit and see if if nothing more, more is coming and then do the, do the, the manip manipulation of the DOM. And also we had been using some third party libraries that were apparently a bit too heavy. Uh, like the, I think the list of fonts that we displayed was for some reason extremely heavy and caused a long delay. And that's all. Thank you.